YouTube, Switch007 here, and I'm doing something a little bit different for my channel today. I have been thinking about Destiny lately, and I wanted to um, have a look and also talk to someone who is very familiar with the game since day one. So I'm joined by a very good friend of mine, Hitman2481, uh, to talk about Destiny the Forsaken DLC. How are you, Hitman? Yeah, good, thanks, Switch. Um, yeah. Excellent. Thanks for having me on the channel. Yeah, no worries at all. So, you are like, honestly, the biggest Destiny fan and one of the most passionate and full-on gamers I know. Um, I think the last time I counted between the PlayStation 4 and the PC, you've done like eight different characters. Is that right? Yeah, eight's about right. I think it's actually closer to ten, but yeah. My eight, God. Eight's probably a good, um, a good average, yeah. Now, you see... That is passion, and at the same time, you would know a lot about what's going on in the community at the moment as well. Yeah, yeah, I just, um, it's a bit frustrating, you know, that, that people are so harsh on the game when, when realistically, the game is still good, especially after the last Warmind um, DLC. Um, Curse of Osiris sort of dropped off and... Um, uh, I didn't play, I, I used to play on PS4 a lot, um, and then Destiny 2 dropped, and I did like five or six characters all in a row, and then I just stopped playing for a while because I'd got all the weapons and done the raid and all that type of thing, and I'd, I'd run out of content to do. Yeah. Um, and I jumped back on for Curse of Osiris, did a few things, and sort of went away again. Um, and then just recently I, I bought it again on PC, uh, and I'm like, yeah, fully addicted again. I got the grind going. I've I play it every single day without without delay. Um, yeah, just chasing the all the itch. exotics that I had on PS4 yep. and that. So you've got definitely got the Destiny itch again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a bit of an understatement, really. Unfortunately, well, well um, unfortunately and fortunately. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. With you and me, we've been active in the Destiny community and playing the game since launch, so since 2014. Yep. So the only thing I missed out on, and I still regret it to this day, was when I didn't play the Rise of Iron DLC with Destiny 1. Yep, yep, but that was pretty good DLC, yep. I heard it was one of the better ones, but at the same time, I made myself a promise that I would never return to Destiny, and as soon as they announced Destiny 2 on PC, look, here I am. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I they got a, me. Lot, yeah, a lot of people were like that. They were like, at the end of it, they were sort of burned out and that, but um, then they announced on PC and it was like, oh my God. Yeah, I couldn't help yeah, myself. I'm like, it go. It's like, did they hear me say I wish I could play this on a gaming PC? Have they heard my keyboard and mouse requests? Yeah, if only PlayStation with their exclusives would hear that call too. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's give it yeah. 10 years and we'll go from there. Yeah. All Leave right. that for another conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the reason I've asked you here to join me is to talk about the current state of Destiny 2 and the DLC so far and the future of this game. And if anyone has the answers, it's going to be you. So... Oh, well, I appreciate that. I don't know if I'll have all the answers, but, you know, I'm happy to uh, give my thoughts on it. Yep, you just say exactly what you think, because I believe in your opinion and you've never steered me wrong with Destiny facts in the past. So oh, thanks, mate. you're welcome. So my first question, um, what do you think about Destiny 2, the Forsaken DLC, and do you think um, it's going to change things up and it will change the way we look at the game? I'm very hopeful that it will. From what I've seen so far, it certainly appears that it will. Um, I think it's really interesting that they're killing Cade off. You know, like a lot of people are really upset about it, you know, like why kill off your best character and and all that type of thing and I'm you know, I, I I understand why people are a bit apprehensive about it. Yep. Um but they you know, this is not the only game where they've killed off main characters. I mean, you know, look at Halo, you know, mm. they kill off Master Chief every other game yep. but he always survives and comes back. Exactly. You know, like maybe maybe Kate will come back. They've said he's not going to um, and apparently Nathan Fillion's actually in the process of doing a, a new TV series. Okay. So, um, so they, I, I don't know if that's why they've sort of killed him off now. Yep. He's, maybe he's not, you know, his schedule's not available to be able to voice and things like that. Okay. Um, and to be honest, I'd really hate if they did 
like uh, what they did with uh, Dinklebot, you know, where they changed it from uh, Dinklage yep. to uh, Nolan North. Yep. If they did that to Cade, that would I think that would piss me off more than anything. I'd rather see him die than have some other rando, random person, you know, like do his voice. Yeah, his voice is like Nick. Yeah, yeah. Nathan yeah. Fillion is K6, and they are one in the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To me. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of changes coming. Um, the the thing I'm probably uh, – this is going to sound a bit funny, but the thing I'm probably most excited about is the bulk shader deletion. Yep. You know, <laughs> being able to just delete massive stacks of, you know, 130 I'm or hearing you there. shaders. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit painful at the moment, but um, – yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the new supers, especially that um, the uh, Master Race, um, the Arc Beam, you know, yep. for the Warlock, the Master Race. I think you'll get confused um, again. The Master Race. I think you mean the Hunter. I don't know why. You... Or maybe take the Titan, but we'll see. Uh, well, uh, I know, do like my Warlocks. I do. Yeah, it's each their own, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I play all three characters. I just main a Warlock. Yeah. Um, well, I've been uh, and, um fire, I've been going to the Titan a lot lately, and I'm like, oh, my hunter's getting a little bit dusty on the boots, a little bit lonely. It's funny you should say that. Actually, I've been playing quite a bit of Melia Titan at the moment myself. Um, yeah. So, you know, the other characters don't get as much love as the Warlock. Yep. Um, but yeah, I've uh, been playing with a few different loadouts and a few different builds, and I just got um, uh, Skyburner's Oath again uh, yesterday. So I've yep. been playing with the um the so-called AC-130 gunship loadout, which has been pretty interesting. Yep. Um, but, yeah, the, the new Gambit mode for um, for um, Forsaken, that looks really, really good. Yep. Um, I'm Mixed interested to see how they do these new... Um, the new seven bosses or whatever they are that are, that are breaking out of the prison. Yep. That I'm assuming are working for the Prince because um, it looks like he's the one that's orchestrating the... The breakout. Yep. Um, and it looks like they've all got different mechanics. Like one of them's a sniper, and you're going to have to have a snipe off with him. And and another one's like a melee a melee um, enemy, and you might have to have a, a fist fight with him or something like that, which is yeah. going to be really interesting I will, to I will see how the mechanics up. happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my next question to you: Do you think it is going to be enough for players who have dropped off to return? Well, honestly, I think I think it will be enough for them for at least a couple of months. Going by what they've said about um, uh, the raid or the raid area, um, I can't for the life of me think what it's called at this point in time. But um, that the new raid space is apparently going to be like a public event area yep. where there's going to be other things going on within that world not just the raid uh, and yes, yep. going to be things that evolve over time and and are not evident right away like it will only be like several weeks after something after the beginning when something will happen i don't know exactly what that is at this stage but yep. just from what they've been saying it's um it looks like it's going to be an ever evolving world at least yeah. for the beginning anyway it looks something out of like it's come out of skyrim that's what reminds mm. me of Elder Scrolls Online. I'm like, is this still Destiny 2? It looks like it's Elder Scrolls. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, different. Very it's different. very, uh, very gorgeous. The mm. the images that we've seen so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cinematic and yep. and yeah. Okay, excellent. And this is a bit of a tough one. Do you still have faith in Bungie? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, even though they've, you know, they may have got that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that they got some hundred million dollar cash injection from a, a massive uh, Chinese company, gaming yep. company, to create a new IP or something. Um, I, I still, I still have faith that you know um, they can turn it around. Um, mm-hmm. As long as they, as long as they listen to what the players want, yep. and along as long as that you know also coincides with their vision for the game. Um, Oh, I I have no doubt that that they'll be able to uh, bring it all around. Excellent. Yeah. And this, well, this tie your answer kind of ties into my next question. Uh, do you what would you like to see in Destiny Three, or would you like to see them do a whole new IP for the next game? 
Um, I don't think I want to see him do a whole new IP just yet. Um, there's still some things I want to know, and you know, like I want to see what I want to know what happens to Marasav. I'm hoping uh, the the Queen of the, the Reef. Um, yep. I'm hoping that that comes out in Forsaken. Yep. If not, you know, so be it. Um, yep. uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a bit more of the uh, Exo Stranger again. Yeah. Um, maybe have her explain some things that she didn't have time to explain previously. Oh, I keep you waiting know? for her to appear in Destiny 2 to explain yeah. the things she didn't have time for, but yeah, it yeah. ain't happening. Well, yeah, well, it turns out that she's um, Anna Bray's sister, which is uh, which is really interesting in of itself. I saw um, giving her a question, me that shitty rifle when I finished the first game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of a kick in the nuts. That, it was. Um, yeah, yeah, finish the whole game and you get a you get a blue. What? It's not an exotic or a legendary? What the hell? Yeah, yeah, bit like bit like Curse of Osiris when they did the stream. It's going to be way more rewarding. Two tokens and a blue. Woo! Yeah. Yay! Can't pick um, that I, one. <laughs> yeah, I really would like to see them get rid of the token system. Honestly, yeah, I don't know what they could re- or what they would replace it with. Um, but. Just putting tokens in, as you know, a, a lot of other people have said, you know, just putting tokens in the slot machine, yeah, and seeing what comes out. A little bit frustrating. Um, I would like to see the vendors being a lot of the vendors now. Uh, you're able to actually um, see and buy things directly from them. Um, and I was um, watching a video the other day, and uh, this guy made a very I can't remember who it was made a very good point. Um, about what they should do is tie quest lines into individual planets and zones Mm -hmm. and you go to the vendor on said planet, he gives you a quest, you go away, do the quest, and you get a weapon. And tie all the weapons, all the, the, the big name weapons, into quests. Okay. So take the whole randomness of the exotic engrams out Yep. And have it all tied into progression. That would make it a, a lot more rewarding game. It would. It would because you you know you don't have to make it. You, and you can make the quest steps as involved or uninvolved as you want. Like look at Nascent Dawn for um, Polaris Lance. You know you got to complete like mm. um, ten ten um, escalation protocol levels yep. before you can even get. You know that's just one of the parts of it. Um, I'm still grinding away on it at the moment. You know, yeah. I still haven't got it all done yet. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, a really, a really good thing. You know, it's always giving you something that you're trying to chase for. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, and that's what everyone point. wants. They want that. They want the chase. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it makes the grind point. a bit more interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Very interesting. So this is a bit of a tough one. Do you think if Destiny Three was taken over by a different studio, and for some weird reason, Bungie didn't make the third game. Do you think it would have a higher fan base if Bungie just threw in the towel? Um, well, to begin with, it would depend on the studio. Yep. Um, if like someone like EA got hold of it, oh, oh my god, god no, that would be no. like that would be like devastating. Yeah. Um, Let's see how Anthem turns but, out then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Fingers crossed for Anthem, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, if someone maybe like, um, well, not CD Projekt Red because their their games are a little bit more niche than than Destiny, which is you know. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they'd really have an interest in making a Destiny style game anyway. Yeah. Um, but maybe someone like um, uh, like Rockstar or um. Even though Rockstar's a little bit more niche with their Grand Theft Auto and things like that, yeah. um, I think it would be interesting to to see what they would do with it. Yeah. Because um, a lot of their stuff's not, you know, it's not token-based. It's it's all mission progression and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the, the PvP aspect would be quite interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. Um, or um, who else? Uh, Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog would be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, God, imagine that. Yeah, there's so many, so many um, opportunities. Uh, great studios out there mm. that uh, it's hard to pick just sort of one or two, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, BioWare, if they weren't under EA, for sure. Yep. Um, 
but now that they're under EA, I sort of hesitate a bit. Yep. Um, okay. But, yeah, they're probably my top picks, I would say. Yep, very good answers. All right, so since... Uh, what are your favourite things and your most hated things about the gameplay of Destiny 2? Um... Oh, look, with the gameplay, just the gun mechanics in general, like, it's phenomenal. just, it's, there's just no other game like it. Like, you play Battlefield, and Battlefield's great, but, yep. you, or I'm in the back of my mind, I'm, every first-person shooter I play, yep. I'm always comparing the, the, the way the guns feel, the way the <laughs> guns handle, um, yeah. all that, I'm always comparing it to Destiny, always, ever since, ever since Destiny 1. Nothing else has the pop, does it? When you shoot something, the way the enemies pop, you you know you've killed them. Nothing has that satisfying thing that Destiny has. Yeah, yeah. and uh, even the weight of the guns, like when you, for instance, with Graviton Lance now, yeah, you know, when you when you fire that Graviton Lance and it and it fires that second round that creates the the hole through uh, space time. Yep, that sound is. You hear that, and you know instantly that's Graviton Lance. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like not an echo. Many, yeah, there's not many weapons within other first-person shooters yep. where you know exactly what that gun is. Yeah. Um, say Unique. for, and this is going to sound a bit weird, but say for PUBG, yep. when you can pick the difference between an AK and, an, uh, and the M416 because the weapon sounds are on point. Even though the rest of the game is, you know, pretty broken most of the time, yeah, um, the weapon sounds are on point. Okay, excellent. All right, very interesting. So, since launch, we've had a lot of fixes, and they have fixed a lot of the feedback. So, since the launch of the game, the fixes they've implemented to you, how, do you think it's made the game better since the day it launched? Um, the most recent update has, yes. Yep. The one where they've, um, they've made the, car- they've made the characters faster, which was actually the one before that. Uh, they made the whole, the whole, uh, movement system a lot quicker. Um, and then the most recent one where they've brought back all the uh, exotic catalysts and things like that, you know, that has really changed it for me. Like, and they've just basically broken all the exotics, which is fantastic. Yes. It um, is. because you actually feel powerful again. You know, like your super makes you feel, you know, marginally powerful at, at any given moment. Um, but those new weapons, or sorry, not the new weapons, the the way they've remade the weapons. Yep. They, like in the Crucible recently, I've been running the tractor cannon <laughs> and I've just been a menace to society. Like seriously, <laughs> I... Uh... I I don't know how to explain it other than I run around having this mega maniacal laugh every time I kill someone with it. <laughs> oh, I can imagine it's, it too. <laughs> uh, seriously, it's like this Mr. Burns laugh every time I kill someone. It's crazy. Oh, funny thing is I can imagine the sound right now in your face when you kill people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sad. <laughs> oh, believe me, I've heard it many times before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't help myself. It's just so much fun, the, the tractor cannon. And, and I got the catalyst for um, for tractor cannon, and I've also got um, the, the catalyst for um, Graviton Lance. And Graviton Lance, they basically turned it into a scout rifle. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal at range. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. And then all the little, um, all the little bombs that come off it when you, when you kill someone, it just, I just love running escalation protocol and grouping up all the um all the hive yep. and then just hitting them with one shot and just watching them all just turn into <laughs> goo. It's it's Line fantastic. them up, put them down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One shot and just they just all explode in a big ball of purple void <laughs> you know um void energy. It's yeah. great. All right, that's awesome. Um this is a actually more recent experience for you, so I'm gonna ask you this one Destiny 2, uh, in terms of the PC, do you think now you've experienced it on the console and the PC, playing with a keyboard and mouse is the best way to play? Yes, absolutely, with 100%, honestly. And I and this is coming from a guy who literally only started playing PC games in November of last year. Yep. 
Uh, I, I literally have never played on a PC before November of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I built my first PC um, with your help, obviously. Yep. Um, and I literally can't go back to console. Mm, I hear I've, I've played God of War yep. on uh, PS4 and that was fantastic. It was a great game. Yep. Um, but you know, I used to be on I used to be on Battlefield One and and even you know Destiny One, Destiny Two on on uh, PlayStation, yep. and I haven't touched it since Curse of Osiris on on PlayStation. Yeah, and I, I'm this uh, sixty frames a second in full four K is just mental. It is. Isn't it's it? a whole it's, new game. It's hectic. It's a whole new game. It is. It really is. And for people that say, you know, you, you, your eyes can't see 60 frames a second and all that type of thing, all I've got to say is you put them side by side and I'm telling you now, you will see the difference. If yep. you can't see the difference, then I'm sorry, but you're blind. Yep. No, I 100% agree. It is definitely a game changer. That's for sure. Yep. So do you think you'll keep playing for the next two to five years with Destiny 2 and if they release Destiny 3? Yes. Yep. Oh, that's yes. a pretty as long as they, me too. Yes. As long as, okay, so here's my caveat to that. As long as they don't end up doing what they did at the beginning of Destiny 2 yep. when, they, when they inevitably launched Destiny 3. Yep. As in, it went from being at the end of, at the end of D1, it was fantastic. It was great. Yep. Then they, they shifted their focus for D2 and they made it more... I don't like saying casual friendly, but more more people uh, who don't have as much time to play as other people. Yep. They took it away from from the hardcore fan base to to make it appeal to other um, demographics. Which they is, took away the grind. Um, they took away the. They didn't so much take away the grind. They just they moved it elsewhere where it just they yeah they took they simplified it. Know. Yeah, they simplified it too much. Like yep. the hardcore crowd, they want that challenge. Yep. Like as much as we hate grinding, at the same time we love it. We we, you know, we dip hate dip. it and we love it at the same time because mm. we know at the end of it, after grinding 40, 40 heroic strikes and you finally get, you know, that one weapon you've been trying to grind for, yep. it's all been worth it. Especially when that weapon is powerful. Okay. No, that's a very good answer. So if we do get a Destiny 3 straight away, what's the biggest change you want to see? I want to see I want to see more story and I want to see more lore, not not in tabs on the game or anything like that. I want to see lore in cutscenes, talking to the ghost. I want to actually hear the lore. Yep. In the game. I don't want to sit there and have to read 20 pages of of dialogue yep. to get the law out of the game. And don't get me wrong, you know, like guys like My Name is Bife, he's the law master as far as I'm concerned. Um, and even he said, I want I want to see more law in the game, you know. Yep. Um, and that's what I really want to see, I, you know, and I don't want them to cut storylines like they've done, like with um, the Exo Stranger. She just sort of disappeared off the planet and... Mm. It's like forgotten about. It's like, oh, we forgot to loop her in. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that to me is incredibly frustrating because you create this story arc. Yep. And then you just people just vanish. You're left out in the wind. So yeah, I just I really want to see a more coherent story, really. Yeah. No, I completely understand. So with the fixes in Destiny 2, do you find the grind now? very similar to Destiny 1 in a good, positive way. So you, the people who want to grind, you feel it's back. Yes and no. Right. So depending on the grind, so for instance, the Polaris Lance grind, um, that's an exotic, it's an exotic quest. Yep. And you've got to grind out the, the levels of escalation protocol and do strikes and all these other, there's like five different steps and there's like three steps within those steps. Yep. Um, so yes, for those things, absolutely. Things like faction rallies, they they need to still do something because at the moment all I do is I go and do public events and one patrol 
and go and do and loot a loot cave. Uh, uh, sorry, not loot cave. A um, a lost sector. Yep. So they need to make more avenues to get more tokens. Yep. In different places, like you know, it's just a matter. It's it seems to be just a matter of just grinding everything each each day. Yeah. To to get to your max level fifty and. I think it's great that they put the, the exotic catalysts and all these um uh uh, uh the weapon the sorry the armor ornaments uh for each faction. I think that's fantastic. Yep. Gives you something to chase. It's definitely made me chase it because before I had zero interest in in faction rallies. Yep. Um, but now I have something that I really want to get because at the moment there's no other way to get them. Yeah, the grind. You want to? Yep, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like you can go and do twenty strikes and hope that it drops. The 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 catalysts for each of the factions is literally only available from those factions during these three faction rallies. So it's worth logging on now before we get the Forsaken DLC. There's a reason to log on. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. If you wanna if you wanna get the best out of or sorry, if you wanna get your character up so that you're ready for Forsaken, um, now would be a good time to get on and start back into it because uh, in the middle of July there's going to be a new update um, they're going to release Prestige Raid Lair for uh, Spire of Stars yeah. and it's going to be dropping weapons I don't know about armor but I know it's going to be dropping weapons at 400 light so we're getting it a light increase up to 400 yeah uh, and and that's the only place that's going to have those particular weapons. It's a huge. Increase. You won't be able to. Yeah, you won't be able to get them within the world at all, other than Inspire of Stars, from what I've, what, from what I've heard. Wow, that is some serious. Yeah, that is wow. Getting the yeah. four hundred just. That's going to be definitely a game changer. Um, I've been thinking while I've been answering, um, yeah, asking you questions off a little bit off, but what I was thinking about the other day is I remember with Destiny One there were raids that absolutely. I could not forget about and we couldn't stop playing them. What's mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. on with the current situation with Destiny 2 raids? Like, you've done the first raid and from what yep. you told me, it doesn't even... It shouldn't even be there. Well, I don't know about it shouldn't be, be there, but what I... Uh, it's It's... To me, unless you're grinding to get levels... Or you're grinding for some specific weapon. There is no, there's no reason to go back to the raid each week, yep. in my opinion. Um, personally, I'm still trying to grind to get to 385. So at the moment, it's advantageous for me to do the raid because it all drops at light specific, um, uh, light specific weapons. Yep. Um, but if it didn't drop at uh, light specific weapons or um, uh, any type of exotics or anything like that, there's no reason to go back to it. Whereas with um, with like Crota and, and all that, you were always chasing. Um, and this is where the random rolls come in. Mm. Random rolls, which they have, um, they have released um, raid perks on the armor, which is great, I think, because that was one of the big things with... Um, with always the, with the raid armor, uh, was there was always raid perks. Yep. But you know, initially when the the raid came out, the Leviathan raid came out, there was no perks on the armor. Right. So they've changed that. I don't, I can't remember which update they changed it in, but they've now released you know raid raid specific perks for yep. that armor. Um, and I think that's another thing that is going to be really good when Forsaken drops. They're bringing back random roles. Okay. which is fantastic because you're always going to be chasing that god roll yes. on on your weapons on your armor to get that perfect roll. Yep. Um but yeah the 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 raid I don't know it's 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 frustrating. Mm. I I don't mind so much that they reuse the space but I just I find that to be uh, I think that that eater that that ship in it, in of itself that could have been a whole another patrol area. Um, it is a big space, isn't it? It's it's a massive space, and it's and to me it's very underutilized. Like um, the farm. 
Like the phone, yeah, like the like the, the what? social space. The, the what? what? What was it? It had grass, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah, yeah. The the place that you go, you know, three or four times. Yeah, and then, yeah. And magically, the tower's rebuilt. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Yeah, yeah, but it uh, it is a tire in in my opinion, it's highly underutilized. You could have used it as like what they're doing for the new um the new raid. Yeah. They've made it both a open area and a raid area. Yep. Like they did on. Um. Uh, like they did on for um. Oh my God! What's the bloody first raid? I can't even think of the name. Volta of it Glass. Now. Volta Glass, like yep. they did on Volta Glass. Yep. You spawned into the raid, and you were on the planet where, and you could see people going in and trying to open up the first raid, the first raid door. Yeah. And you could even help them do it if you wanted to. Yep. You know that while you couldn't actually enter the raid with them. Oh, I tried. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Yeah, I think we all tried that, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, it was still it was still something that made it a little bit more interesting, you know, like you could you could see people, you know, working their way through the raid. And they even did that in um Wrath of the Machine. Yep. Where you went around the top of the wall, you could see people doing that. Yeah, yeah. No, and good, that to me is, yeah, that's fascinating watching people It is. You know? No, work their way definitely. through a raid, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Well, the new Forsaken DLC, they said there's going to be a raid, and they're saying, but I've said this to us before, it's going to be, you've, you've never seen any raid like it. Mm. Like, prepare yourselves. And I'm going to admit right now, I still haven't done the first raid from Destiny 2. So shoot yep. me, but I still haven't done it, and I don't think I ever will. I would like to, but from what I've said, the raid in the Forsaken is going to be hectic, and I am looking forward to seeing what it brings. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, from what they've said, it um, not just that area where the raid is, but the the raid in of itself is going to change yep. over time, um, which I'm really fascinated by, and I really want to see how they implement that. Mm. Um, because there were a few areas in um, in the Taken King raid where they just ended up sort of being useless. Like um, there was one area where you could go and like dunk an orb, like like playing basketball, but yep. that ended up being for nothing. Yeah. Uh, and I think they could have really, you know, un- well, I think they really did underutilize some of those little secret areas. Like why build them if if you're not gonna use them? I know some of those areas would take months to make. It's like, oh, for sure. It's like the farm. How long did the farm take? And it's not even used. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Not just design, but, you know, then you've got someone that's got to draw all that and, you exactly. know, someone's got to code it all and then it's just like you never go back there. Yeah, exactly. Now, that's a very good point. Well, that um, is everything I can think of. Uh, so, YouTube, I wanted to do something a little bit different. If anyone watches this and you're a Destiny fan, definitely um, give it a listen. Hitman is the most knowledgeable person I know when it comes to Destiny, and any questions I've ever had, he can answer. So, thank you, Hitman, for joining me. I really do appreciate My it. My pleasure. It's been fun. Thanks for having me. No worries. Um, until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll speak soon. Thank you.